This is Joseph Gagnon, Senior Fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. I'd like to talk to you today about the global growth slowdown, uh, sometimes called secular stagnation. Um, this actually has been going on uh, since early 1990s when Japan started to slow down. Uh, and then in the late 90s, a lot of other countries in Asia, except China, uh, had a major crisis and they slowed after that uh, permanently. Uh, the effects of this on the whole world economy were masked, however, uh, during the 1990s and after by the rise of China, which actually accelerated, as well as uh, countries in the former Soviet bloc uh, that uh, join the Western world and start to grow faster for a while. But those, those countries are now slowing down. And we now see that this uh, slowdown is really affecting not only uh, those countries, uh, but other countries, uh, the US and um, European, Western European countries, all around the world there's been a, a global slowdown in growth uh, that really the only exceptions are India and Africa. Now the causes of this slowdown are threefold. One is demographics. Uh, everywhere, again, except India and Africa, uh, people are getting uh, older, uh, fewer children are being born, so populations are growing more slowly, labor force is increasing less rapidly, uh, and this is a big contributor to the slowdown. Another possible contributor is uh, the rate of technological progress, uh, which affects productivity growth. Um, we're actually going to have a conference on this uh, next week at the Peterson Institute to talk about this. This is controversial. Some people believe uh, this is a trend effect and some people don't. Uh, and I think that deserves further study. The third important factor uh, that doesn't really affect the U.S. so much but does affect a lot of other countries is that uh, as they were growing faster than the U.S., they were catching up to the U.S., they were starting from, from being uh, behind as they're catching up to the U.S., uh, it's normal to grow more slowly as you get uh, closer to the leader uh, because um, there's less uh, low-hanging fruit. So, so basically the easy things they can do to increase productivity uh, are, are finished and they slow down towards the U.S. growth rate. So all these factors are at work around the world uh, causing the slowdown in growth. What are the effects of this slowdown in growth besides, of course, the, the fact that we are getting richer at a slower rate? Well. One of the biggest ones people talk about right now is that uh, real interest rates, that's the rates of interest minus inflation, are uh, very low, at levels we haven't seen except in occasional uh, periods after uh, large inflations and, and war times, uh, and that isn't the case now. So it's unusual to have such low interest rates that we have now. Uh, and, but this uh, probably is related, uh, importantly, to the slowdown in growth. Some people also argue that these low interest rates may be uh, partly a factor behind the, the recent big financial crash we had and other countries' uh, uh, financial crises in the past few decades. Uh, that's a little less clear. Uh, but what is clear is that uh, the sort of the low rates of interest that economies need to keep them growing, even at the new slower rate of growth, uh, are difficult to achieve because uh, interest rates can't nominal interest rates can't go below zero. Uh, and uh, with inflation so low, uh, the real interest rate uh, can't uh, get very, as low as the economy needs. So central banks around the world have had difficulty keeping economies on track, keeping employment uh, up at uh, full employment. Uh, and we've had a slow recovery, uh, partly because of this. Another factor is that fiscal policy uh, in the recent recession uh, basically uh, built up a lot of debt, and uh, people uh, are getting nervous about that. Although perhaps they shouldn't be as nervous as they are because the fact that interest rates are so low means that the burden of this debt will be much less than it would have been in previous years. Now another thing that's come along to further intensify the slowdown uh, in advanced economies and the, and the decline in real interest rates is that emerging markets, developing economies more broadly, uh, don't borrow the way they used to uh, to finance development. Uh, what they've actually been doing is uh, saving that money and sending, uh, sending it back to advanced economies. So capital flows from the advanced economies to developing economies, but then their governments basically have been uh, taking that and sending it back to advanced economies. Um, this has been a conscious decision to sort of change the way they develop uh, away from borrowing to finance investment projects at home, instead to getting exports by keeping their currencies down and sending their money to advanced economies. And that's been a big contributor to low interest rates. 
and some slowdown in growth in the advanced economies. So what, what is the prognosis? What should we do? Well, uh, I think this is going to be a topic for ongoing debate. I think one possibility would be perhaps uh, countries maybe should be aiming for a bit more inflation than they have. Uh, zero to two may be a little bit too low uh, to keep the economy on track, uh, but that's obviously uh, uh, rather controversial. Uh, another possibility is just that the quantitative easing that we've seen in a number of countries might become a more a routine phenomenon going forward when we get into trouble. Central banks have to do something uh, when interest rates hit zero, uh, and perhaps uh, uh, that's a way to go. We certainly don't see yet many um, bad side effects of that policy where it's been used. A third thing is Perhaps this is a good time to invest in public infrastructure. Uh, and the OECD just put out a report saying that indeed countries should be doing more of that and it would pay for itself if it's done uh, wisely uh, because interest rates are so low and investing in uh, productive public infrastructure actually generates a social rate of return that's greater uh, than the cost of, of uh, financing it. So that's actually a, po a net plus for the, the economy. And maybe this is one thing we should need to think about more. Finally, I think. We probably need some rules on uh, when countries are, when there is a slowdown and countries are having trouble uh, getting growth because they can't get interest rates below zero and they, for whatever reason, don't want to do quantitative easing or fiscal policy. Uh, there's a temptation to turn to uh, uh, manipulating their currencies by sending capital elsewhere, push their currency down and get exports. But of course, one person's export is another person's import, which is a loss of demand and sort of a beggar dog neighbor policy. Uh, I think this is going to be a, a potential problem in the next slowdown. We need to make sure we have rules in place uh, to keep it from happening. Thank you.